Good morning. Welcome to worship at Grace Lutheran Church. My name is Landon Martin. I'm one of the pastors here, and it is uh, truly a blessing to begin the week uh, in the Lord's house here with uh, all of you. Um, today, uh, a handful of announcements. See, here's what happened. You probably noticed already the bulletin insert has become scraps of paper. Uh, what happened was one of the lightning storms last week took out our server, and with it, the ability to make the uh, the insert normal for a week and thankfully it happened after the bulletin was printed But unfortunately before the insert with the announcements was printed So uh, I'm going to try really hard with the help of these scraps of paper to uh, walk you through the goings-on around here um, You can see a couple of things on Well, first of all this social ministry is collecting uh, school supplies for Fredland Middle School, again, you can get all kinds of information here and that stuff. We have a drop-off place uh, in the entryway of the church. Um, there is a whole bunch of really neat stuff happening the rest of the summer here at Grace. Normally, uh, churches will kind of take the summer to relax a little bit. We can't. We have too much stuff to celebrate, too much stuff to do. So um, there is a little uh, kind of key dates calendar at the bottom of this sheet here for you to help you kind of wrap your head around and to know ahead what's, what's going on. In particular, the thing that I'm really excited about is uh, this August 11th date, Christmas in the summer. This is something I just kind of invented <clears throat> hearing from a lot of people how much you love to sing our Christmas hymns, our Christmas songs, and how they're only here for a little bit. And really, the coming of the Lord Jesus is something that we hold in our hearts and our minds and our, in our world all the time, so we can celebrate it anytime we want to. So that day in particular, the whole service is going to be wrapped around the Christmas readings, the Christmas hymns, the Christmas theme. And we're going to uh, remember that blessing that is the Son of God coming to earth for each of us on that day and belt out joy to the world like it's Christmas Eve. So uh, I hope you can join us for that. It, it should be really neat. Um, let's see. This week on Thursday at 2 o'clock, we are at Quantico Cemetery having a burial for Ted Ensminger. If you would like to be part of that, if you'd like to join, you can meet us at the Visitor Center at 145. And if you forget the times, no problem. Call the church office. Um, we'd be happy to help you out with that. This week... Our Bible classes, Wednesday is on like normal, so you can catch that Wednesday at 10 o'clock. We're still walking through the Gospel of Mark. We'll be in chapter 4, uh, and you can catch that now online on the Facebook page, uh, live and archived afterwards if that's helpful to you. Uh, the Friday night class this week, though, is canceled, so please be aware of uh, both of those. Um, oh, uh, next week we are, uh, the other announcement you can see on here, kind of observing Compassion International and all of their work with uh, needy children around the world. And uh, to kind of help out with this, we have a display up and back that Herb and Susan first have put up. And I'd like to ask Herb to just say a little bit about uh, what's going on with that. Should be. Uh, 20 years ago, I started sponsoring children through Compassion. And I realized that you know, for $38 a month, my life's not going to change. But everything belongs to God, and for $38, some of these children's families don't even have $38 a month. And the difference that your contribution makes makes a difference in the child's life. What Compassion does, it's been around since 1952, and helped over 1.9 million children partner with churches, find sponsors, and find a difference that we can make in a child's life in other countries. And just think about it, how our life doesn't change by contributing $38 a month, but we've been sponsoring children. We have two children out there we sponsor for over 10 years, and you can see the pictures from when they're six till they're 16, and they bless us. They send us um, letters about praying for us and you know, uh, wishing us well. And if you have children, it's a great way to partner and show your children how other children live in other countries. So we just ask you to thoughtfully and prayerfully think about sponsoring a child and making a difference in another child life. We'll be here today and next Sunday and we'll explain how the packets work and how to uh, coordinate your sponsorship with different countries and children you decide to sponsor. Thank you very much. Thanks, sir. 
Uh, from that, uh, this week and next week, that, that display will be up for more information for the ability to uh, sponsor a child and so forth, and I'm sure Herb or Sue would be happy to talk to you about that. Um, this morning, uh, I was talking about all the neat blessings that we have on different dates on our calendar here at Grace this summer, and today's one of those days for a couple of reasons. Uh, first of all, we will be remembering one of the neatest ladies to have uh, graced the sanctuary, Shirley Colas, as we uh, dedicate the new quiet room, formerly the cry room back there. Uh, her memorial fund was used to totally reinvigorate that space, and it is uh, really amazing. So if you haven't had a chance to go look in there, uh, I recommend that, and there will be a place in our worship service where uh, we'll be dedicating that this morning. So uh, please, sometime when you have a chance, look at it. It's, it's really a neat thing. And uh, considering that that's where uh, the children of the congregation in a lot of ways get their footing in the Christian faith, I can't think of anything that would make Shirley happier right now um, to uh, honor her memory and everything that the Lord Jesus did through her presence here. Uh, than uh, that space. Uh, you agree, Sam? All right. Um, so I'm, I'm excited about that. Uh, I, I, I miss her often, and, and I think that's a really wonderful tribute. Also, uh, the Colas, Sam and Shirley Colas Memorial Choir Room could not have happened without some coordination and somebody to uh, kind of take the center and pick things out and drive the project forward. And it's with that idea that we uh, remember our other celebration, and that is the retirement and the moving of uh, George and Karen Ruish to the sunny beaches of New Hampshire, to <laughs> where they are, um, in seriousness, able to spend uh, every day with their grandchildren, one of whom is here with us today. And so we, uh, we have been so blessed by these two, George leading our choir, Karen leading our congregation for uh, many, many years as the office manager. Uh, Karen, you have outlasted how many pastors? Nine. Nine. Um, I joked with her many times that if uh, Grace Lutheran Church was a game of survivor, Karen would be the all-time champion. And uh, I think that's true, but today, I'm sorry, you lose. Uh, but, <laughs> but we have won for so very long, and we're so thankful for all your efforts uh, in this place and to God's kingdom, and you're already missed, and you'll continue to be missed um, really every day. And uh, with that, uh, I'd like to invite our congregation chairman, Brian Klein, up. especially a family that's been so involved like the Ruishes. Um, for more than a decade, they have uh, had children grow up here, they've had weddings here, and more recent, uh, and uh, Karen's been the, the office manager, George has been the choir director, and we just wanna give you a token of our gratitude, so thank you very much. And the, the quilter group um, made you guys a personal quilt for you, so we can try to open this up. Real. I'm sure it's gigantic. Oh. So there you are. Thank you all very much. A round of applause. For that. <laughs> now you're going to see two men try to fold a blanket. She's got it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a flag, Josh. <laughs> That's an old Thank habit. But... <laughs> yeah. So uh, George and Karen, we uh, will cherish you in our hearts. This is home, and we think of this as your home, and we hope that you uh, visit once in a while. Don't be strangers. Um, now, with all of that said, are there any other announcements, anything that I've missed in this uh, strange week of no bulletin insert, which I hope I can promise maybe will not happen again next week? Oh. 
Oh yeah, uh, because the, the prayer lists were something that was on the bulletin inserts, the ushers have a stack of the prayer requests. So if that's something that you used in your own home for family devotions, personal prayers, that kind of a thing, uh, as you leave church today, you can get that from the ushers, the, the community prayer list. So just be aware of that. Anything else? Vic? Oh, okay, okay, okay. A reminder for the school supply drive. The first weekend of August is the, the sales tax holiday for, for that stuff. Thanks, Vic. All right, well, today in worship, uh, besides our uh, celebrations of people that have meant a whole lot to this place, we will be looking at what might be one of the shortest gospel lesson accounts that we uh, ever have before us, but it's a very familiar account of Jesus and the disciples going to visit Mary and Martha. And uh, what happens there is not really too different than things that we see in our midst, in our lives, in different situations often, but we're going to be kind of looking at, especially on the heels of the Good Samaritan parable last week, what this means for our lives, what we can take from this, and uh, how, how we can see the Lord Jesus alive and, and beside us every minute of every day, no matter what's going on. And so that's going to be the kind of triumphant theme that we celebrate together this morning in worship. And uh, with that said, if there's any questions that you have about uh, the worship, the music, the themes, anything you see or hear this morning, uh, please talk to me after the service. I love to have conversations about all that God is doing in this place and in our community and our lives, and uh, I'm definitely available for that. And with that said, it is our, uh, our real pleasure, finally, to uh, get to the good stuff and stand as we join together in our opening song. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. 
If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? With you there is forgiveness, therefore you are here. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ and the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together, as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Please kneel or be seated for a time of confession. We confess together, Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you of all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We now stand to share the peace and joy of that forgiveness with one another.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O Lord, grant us the Spirit to hear your word, and know the one thing needful that by your word and Spirit we may live according to your will. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading this morning is from Genesis, the 18th chapter. The Lord appeared to Abram by the oaks of Mamre as he sat at the door of his tent in the heat of the day. He lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, three men were standing in front of him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent door to meet them and bowed himself to the earth and said, O Lord, if I have found favor in your sight, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree while I bring a morsel of bread that you may refresh yourselves. And after that, you may pass on since you have come to your servant. So they said, do as you have said. And Abraham went quickly into the tent of Sarah and said, quick, three seahs of fine flour knead it and make cakes. And Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to a young man who prepared it quickly. Then he took curds and milk and the calf that he had prepared and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, Where is Sarah, your wife? And he said, She is in the tent. The Lord said, I will surely return to you about this time next year, and Sarah, your wife, shall have a son. And Sarah was listening at the tent door behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, advanced in years. The way of women had ceased to be with Sarah. So Sarah laughed to herself, saying, After I am worn out and my Lord is old, sh shall I have pleasure? The Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say, Shall I indeed bear a child now that I am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At that appointed time I will return to you about this time next year, and Sarah shall have a son. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. The epistle is from the book of Colossians, the first chapter. You who once were alienated and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he has now reconciled in his body of flesh by his death, in order to present you holy and blameless and above report, reproach before him. If indeed you continue in faith, stable and steadfast, not shifting from the hope of the gospel that you have heard, which has been proclaimed in all creation under heaven, and of which I, Paul, became a minister, now I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I am filling up what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, that is, the church, of which I became a minister according to the stewardship from God that was given to me for you, to make the word of God fully known, the mystery hidden for ages and generations, but now revealed to his saints. To them God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Him we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone with all wisdom, that we may present everyone mature in Christ. For this I toil, struggling with all his energy that he powerfully works within me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 10th chapter. Now as they went on their way, Jesus entered a village, and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. But Martha was distracted with much serving, and she went up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things, but one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion, which will not be taken away from her. This is the gospel of the Lord. Now please join me as we confess our faith through the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, in Jesus Christ, who is on Son, Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, burned at the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Please take a seat and now invite all the children up to the front for the children's message. Sit right here. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right. It looks like we had our Wheaties today. Well, I wanted to ask a question real quick. How many of you have gone to school and have left something behind? Hmm. Okay. What have you left behind? Your notebook, right? That's important. What have you left behind? My water bottle. Your water bottle. Yes, definitely. That's important. How about you? A glove. A glove, yes. To uh, keep warm. And sweater ones. And your sweater. Oh, no. You were cold all that day, weren't you? How about you? Homework. Homework. Yes, definitely important. How about you? Water bottle. Water bottle, right? And? Binder. Binder. How about you? Lunchbox. Well, you know, I almost I had the same problem when I was younger too. You know, I occasionally forgot my lunchbox. But you know why? Take a wild guess why. Why would you forget something in the morning? Because you're tired. That you're too busy about doing it. Everything else and you forget it's there. You're too busy doing everything else, like the important things in life, like cartoons, right? Watching cartoons in the morning? <laughs> Rushing. Rushing, yes. So we get so busy and so we do all these important things. We cannot forget the cartoons. We cannot forget to eat homework. breakfast, homework, and all this other stuff, right? And then we, live, we leave back our lunch boxes. Well... In our teaching this morning, we have two sisters, right? Two sisters. One is Martha, the other one is Mary. And they invite Jesus to come into their house. That's a great privilege to have Jesus into their house. Wouldn't you think? Yes. I would invite Jesus if he was around. But then we have one sister that stays with Jesus at his feet, sitting down, listening to what he's saying. And the other one is getting everything ready, and she gets a little bit upset. And she says, you know what, hey, tell Mary to come and help me. And Jesus says, hey, Martha, and I'm going to change it up a little bit around so we can understand it here. He says, hey, Martha, 
You are missing the point here, sister. You are missing that she has the best seat of the house. And we do that, huh? When we forget stuff. Because we are distracted. And we forget that it is better to spend time with Jesus than to do everything else in life. Hmm, but I still got to eat and I still got to do things. But it's mostly important that you and I spend some time with Jesus. And how do we do that? By being nice. By being nice and how else? Yes? Going to church. Yes, coming to church, coming in this building together, we spend time with Jesus. In our homes when we pray, in our homes when we read the Bible, those are important times. And that's what Jesus is telling Martha. You know, hey, it's good that we watch cartoons, it's good that we watch TV, it's good that we play in our Xbox and our Playstations and, you know, do all of our wonderful things that we do in life, but one thing cannot be left out. And that is being at Jesus' feet. All right? So just think about it. When you are at home, at school, you're doing all those great stuff. But don't forget about Jesus. All right? Let us pray. Dear Jesus, help us at all times to remember you because you are the center of our salvation. We give you thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can go back to your seats now.
Grace, mercy, and peace be multiplied unto you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The text, Luke chapter 10, our gospel lesson, and Jesus' words in particular that he says to Martha towards the end of our text, I'd like to uh, start with on our, our hearts and minds. Jesus says, your sister Mary, she has chosen the good portion. So far the text. So a couple of weeks ago, uh, as a lot of you know, we had a lot of family, Alyssa's immediate family, mom, dad, a couple brothers, their families, everyone stayed with us, the house was booming. Um, it was the first time we had that many people staying with us. We learned some lessons. It was actually really nice. Um, but there was one night in particular, one thing that happened that I thought of immediately when I read this gospel lesson. So here's what happened. It's the first night when everyone's together and about to have dinner. So it's got to be a good dinner, right? So we were going to have barbecued chicken. Okay, now there were 12 people eating barbecue chicken at our house. I'd like to remind you how it works planning a meal as you get more and more people. So barbecue chicken for two people is chicken and salad. Barbecue chicken for four people is like chicken salad bread. Barbecue chicken for 12 people is chicken salad bread, macaroni and cheese, watermelon, potato salad, coleslaw, I think there is even like string cheese and mandarin oranges around the table or something like that. So it's a big deal. It's a big thing to put on all this stuff. This is a buffet that would make Thanksgiving jealous. Now, there is one and only one right way to cook barbecue chicken in the summer, right? What's that way? The grill, that's right. Now, the last couple of weeks, it's been um, not quite like griller friendly in Northern Virginia, right? But that changed nothing. So we had our group of people that were worrying about the salad, the bread, the macaroni and cheese, all the side dishes and so forth. And those people, they're in the kitchen in the air conditioning, cold drink in hand, of course. They're joking around, they're enjoying company. And of course, Doug, my father-in-law, he automatically draws, accepts, takes the short straw, which is he's in charge of the grill, okay? So, while everyone that's in charge of the side dishes, cold drink, laughing, having a good time, air conditioning, while there's still the people that, you know, just weren't needed, you don't need 12 people to prepare the meal, they just had, like, TV cold drink air conditioning, they're winning too. But Doug Fosha, my father-in-law, he is not only in charge of the centerpiece, of the first dinner that the whole family is together, the barbecue chicken. Not only does he have that stress, but his hands are full. He can't have a cold drink. So he is sweating like he's in an oven because he was in an oven. <laughs> he has that stress on his back. He does it willingly and cheerfully, and the chicken's great and the meal's great. But he didn't have any of the fun, any of the relaxation that everyone else got to have. Now, when we look at this text in particular, Mary and Martha being visited by Jesus and the disciples, it's only five verses long. Five verses. I told the vicar this morning, you drew the best straw. This is one of the shortest gospel lessons we ever get. And especially for a Luke text, Luke loves to give us all kinds of detail, and we don't get it this time. Why? Because we've all lived this, right? Everyone in this room has been Doug, Doug Fosham over the grill or in the next room taking one for the team, not necessarily enjoying the company and all the thrills of everyone being together. You've either been that person or you have someone like that in your friend or family group. We know this text. We live this text. Every holiday, every time we get together, there it is. And so, with only five verses... With only five verses, we can fill in the gaps. No problem. Because when we look down at this text, we read it and we, um, we really can see everything that's happening because we've been there. So um, let me try to do that a little bit here. So Jesus and his disciples, they're visiting Mary and Martha and Lazarus, three siblings. They live together, they're home. And they often, I think always, visit them on their way to Jerusalem. They're doing that today. Now, probably this visit is unannounced. So Jesus comes up, knocks on the door. 
Martha gets the door. We know that from the text. She answers the door. Oh, my goodness, what a wonderful visit. Jesus is here and the rest of our friends, right? Uh, Peter and James and John and Andrew and the rest of you best friends. You're all here. This is great. And so then she immediately turns around and says, Mary, get in here. You'll never guess who's here. And Lazarus, get off the couch and come, come greet our guests. Right? This is probably something like this all happening. They line up. They give hugs. And then the important stuff starts. Jesus sits down in whatever the biggest kind of gathering area is. And the disciples around him and Lazarus is probably there and Mary's there. And they're just listening to him speak. And it's a marvelous, amazing, life-changing experience to hear Jesus speak in this place. But Martha, she's the duty one. She's the one that got the door. She's the one that got everyone ready. And she realizes somewhere along the way something like, Oh, all 13 of you for dinner and staying indefinitely. Terrific! I'll get everything ready, no problem. This, this is the humanity of our text. These are real people that really lived, and this kind of thing would have had to have happened. And so she runs into the back, the next rooms. We can picture it happening, because this is the mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, uncle, Doug Fosham, the hero uh, straw drawn. And she starts getting food ready. She starts, like, washing towels and blankets and figuring out seating assignments and all the stuff that you would do to get ready for 13 people to stay with you unannounced. She's doing all this stuff, and Jesus is sitting with everyone else, and he's just talking with them and teaching them this marvelous experience. Now, if we were to stop right there, right there, then Martha is a hero, a hero. Because the text right before this is the one that we looked at last week, which was the Good Samaritan where we're taught to love God with our everything first and then love our neighbor as ourself, and the parable talks to us just about how hard it is to really love our neighbor as ourself. And Martha is living this out in this account, immediately following that parable. She would be a good Samaritan theme hero for all time if this text was just a little bit shorter yet and stopped right there. But it doesn't. See, the next thing that happens, Martha goes in where Jesus is teaching, where everyone's gathered. And she says to Jesus, Lord, don't you care that I'm doing all this work, that my sister's not helping all this stuff? And now we realize that she's not joyfully skipping off to the back room like grandma and grandpa or my father-in-law to do the tough work for everyone. She's back there slamming doors and banging pots and making a racket because she feels like she really got the short end of the stick today. Because she wants to be in there by her friends too. She wants to be hearing from Jesus. She wants to get to that point, but she just feels that she needs to be doing this and serving all of these people that she's so close to. Now something happens when she speaks to Jesus and says, Lord, don't you care about you know, all the stuff that's going on? Do you realize that when she says, Lord, don't you care, what she really is saying, the question of her heart is asking, Lord, don't you care about me? She sees herself as kind of a victim here. She sees herself as struggling. She sees herself as being in a tough spot, and nobody cares. And she goes to that friend, that closest of friends, Jesus, that absolutely should care, and she exclaims the question of her heart, Lord, don't you care about me? You see what happened right there? All of a sudden, I'm in this text too. I think you're right there next to me, aren't you? Because how often is the question of our heart, Lord, don't you care about me? 
about what I'm going through. And so every time something difficult happens, we have this struggle. So we get bad medical news, and the question of our heart rests, Lord, don't you care about me? We're having a tough time at work or at school, Lord, don't you care about me? A temptation, a struggle, an addiction that we have battled for a long time and we stumble yet again, Lord, don't you care about me? Something happens tragic to someone that we're close to, Lord, don't you care about me? Our life's not going the direction we had planned, Lord, don't you care about me? We're hurting the relationships that mean the most to us with our sinful behavior and neglect and so forth. Lord, don't you care about me? See, just when we're ready to pile on Martha for not listening to the Lord, the question of her heart is the question of our heart too. So, Jesus has to respond. Jesus says, in that first clause of his answer, that Mary has chosen the good portion. Now, there's something really fascinating that happens in this text, specifically. The direct object of the portion, which we would probably take for granted as being the good portion of time, the good portion of priorities, something like that. The good portion that Jesus is actually talking about here is all the stuff that Martha's getting ready. So, a better way probably to translate this verse, to say this verse, is Mary has chosen the good portion of food. Now that's strange. But is it? Is Jesus really doing anything different than Martha was trying to do, but on a grander, divine scale? See, Martha was so worried about feeding people, fulfilling their physical need, while Jesus was abundantly feeding their spiritual need. He was giving them the Word of God, which eternally, absolutely answers the questions of our hearts, fills us spiritually and completely, and reminds us of a lot of really important things. Because when we're filled with the good portion, we know the answer to all the questions of our heart. Right? Lord, don't you care about me when I'm going through health issues? Yes. Lord, don't you care about me when things aren't so great at work? Yes. Lord, don't you care about me when my friendships are falling down and I need them? Yes. Lord, don't you care about me when my addictions and temptations are getting the better of me way more often than I'd like to admit? Yes. The answer to the question of our heart, Lord, don't you care about me, is always and forever, every single time, yes. And the way we know the answer to that question is when we get the good portion when we are fed with the Word of God, which tells you from the foundations of the world you have been loved and cherished and cared for and forgiven. And Jesus doesn't stop there. Jesus teaches specifically with his words, the eternal Word of God, that in all of our struggles, he's going through it right with us. When we mourn, he mourns with us. When we celebrate, he celebrates with us. When we're having a hard time, he cries. Jesus also and completely proves his answer to the questions of our heart as he gives his entire life in an agonizing way so that even when we think, well, what do, where do I go from here? How can I ever be forgiven? Lord, don't you care about me? Even the answer to that is forever and eternally yes.
And when he does that, when he gives his life, when he makes that sacrifice, he even, in a way, is feeding us physically in the way that Martha tried to do. He gives us his body and his blood that we partake in today as a triumphant community, loved and forgiven, eternally firm in the understanding that the Lord cares about you. And so we stand as people not wondering and wondering if the Lord cares about us or if he's there. We stand as people that are confident that we've been loved and forgiven and cherished and that when we, anything that we go through, he's going through it right by our side. And so even maybe when you feel like Martha or Doug or Grandma, that nobody cares and you're slaving away for everyone else, the Lord cares about you there too. And he cherishes the way that you're caring for your family and your friends and your loved ones through your actions. See, Jesus never tells Martha, you did the wrong thing. He just says your sister did a better thing. Martha was loving her family and her friends that God gave to her. That's a beautiful, wonderful thing. It's just that when you get your priorities right and when you have God first, you never wonder, Lord, don't you care about me? Because the starting point and the ending point forever is yes, because he does care for you. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which certainly surpasses understanding, keep your hearts and your minds focused on Jesus Christ to life eternal. Amen. Okay. Could everyone please stand and kind of pivot while I try to go sort of by the quiet room? All right. Am I still okay? All right. So again, the quiet room is a tribute to the work of the Lord Jesus of Sam and Shirley Colas in our midst and in their lives in this place. And so uh, we joyfully dedicate this room uh, adjacent to me today. Beloved in the Lord, the psalmist declares, unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. Since the Lord has taught us in his holy word that all things are holy when sanctified by the word of God and prayer, it is fitting that we bless and sanctify this quiet room to be a place where the Lord's will is done and his name is glorified. Let us pray. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, without whom no work or work of ours avails, grant your blessing to all those who use this quiet room. Help them to grow day by day in the knowledge of your will and in the grace to perform it, to the honor and praise of your name and the good of all people. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless this quiet room to the glory and honor of his name. Amen. We remain standing for prayer. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the gift of divine peace, and of pardon with all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the Holy Christian Church, here, scattered throughout the world, and for the proclamation of the gospel and the calling of all to faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for this nation, for our communities, for our cities and our communities, for our military, including Renee, Abby, Derek, Dan, James, Michael, Stephen, Tim, Paul, Stephen, Randall, Stephen, Evan, Lee, Paul, Nathan, and Michael. And for the common welfare for all, of us all, let us pray to the Lord. For re seasonable weather and for the fruitfulness of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. For those who labor, for those who work in difficult or dangerous, and for all who travel, let us pray for, 
to the Lord. For all those in need, for the hungry and homeless, for the widow and the orphan, and for all those in prison, let us pray to the Lord. For the sick and dying, and for all those who care for them, including Vic, Louise, Bonnie, Monk, Alfreda, Frank, Sam, Don, Bruce, Cheryl, Marilyn, Mary, Marcy, Linda, Rosemary, Donna, Irene, Carolyn, Marina, Donnie, Juanita, Reverend Art Sher, Eleanor, Wilma, Patty, Sharon, Glenda, Casey. Let us pray to the Lord. Finally, for these and all, all of our needs of the body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. Amen. Please have a seat. Stand up. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. Give Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places. Give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death, that we might not die eternally, because he has now risen from the dead and lived and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with the angels and the archangels and with all the company of heaven, we lord and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and say,
Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruit of his cross and receive the blessing of forgiveness, life, and everlasting that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and glory. Where are they are now? Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in the memory of me. In the same way, also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, gave it to the disciples, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
about and the blood of Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in holy and soul, in body and soul, to life everlasting. Depart in peace and his joy. Amen. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this solitary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord keep the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
Our service is over, but our mission continues. Go in peace and serve the Lord.